ridiculous size roundabout for a twin axle you'll ever see on a site. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. just stopped off in an air we're on our way north now so it's Saturday evening probably about 10 o'clock maybe after the most stressful getting off a site ever um, we've stopped at an air on the A61 right near Carcassonne well, I hope it's not too dark and you can see me so like I say we're at Carcassonne an air just outside Carcassonne actually it's about 27 degrees 10 o'clock at night and we're just heading north Six, A61 there's Carcassonne, uh, hopefully you can see that. I'll zoom in if not after it. So, if you ever get a chance to visit Carcassonne, it's an absolutely fantastic place. It's a citadel with high walls and uh, inside the citadel is uh, like shops, restaurants, parked up in an air just um, north of Bordeaux uh, so we left at well it's three in the morning now we left at about 8 p.m. Saturday night so quite a hike uh, a bit of a nightmare getting off the side as I probably said earlier so this air is well I say it's an air I suppose it is an air in its yeah it is an air but it's got a petrol station um, caravan parks another caravan sleep there there's lorries parked up as well here Now I think general general terms with airs, I think it makes it's common sense to go in somewhere where it's well lit and there's lorries. Just stay, if you're going to stay on an air, stay one that you feel safe. Uh, this one feels fairly safe. Like I say, there is, there are lorries, post station, well lit, um, other people around. So we're going to get a few hours sleep, and we've got another four hours drive after this. A few moments later. My advice, book a bloody campsite. <laughs> no, uh, so, okay, so, bit of sleep last night. So I think, when I last spoke to you, I think it was about half three or so. I think it's now like half seven, maybe. So, I'm the sort of person who can't function on any less than eight hours sleep. Anyway, I mean, you know, it's okay. Reasonably quiet. You do get 
people coming and going and slamming doors and stuff and sort of lorries with their chillers. This is somewhere to sleep. I mean this it's good doing like a trip like we're doing because obviously you can't rock up on a campsite at three in the morning. So we had a almost six hundred mile journey to do um for a campsite this morning so it's gotta be done isn't it? Like quite a nice day obviously you can hear the motor i mean you know it's a bit like sleeping in a service station at home and the difference is you don't pay 23 quid for this one you just pull up have a sleep and drive on again man is in there just making a brew so this morning i think about another four hours five hours drive but we can't get on the, as i said yesterday we can't get on the campsite till two so we're going to just hang about here have a bit of breakfast a cup of tea great thing about a caravan and that you can just you can you can't do this sort of thing it's an adventure uh, another thing I was gonna say is uh, I know people are gonna say why the hell don't you just stop in a campsite well we could do that but if we would have stopped in a campsite we would have <clears throat> so we, we could have been there till this morning at that site where we just were and we could have driven four hours and gone to another campsite and that would have been today and then we've got up the next day and then going on to another campsite and we'd have only still only been would have been here which would have been like basically two days so we've kind of saved ourselves a day by just doing like a seven hour drive up from uh, Collier and I was just talking there to Mandy by the way as you do and we were saying it took us seven hours and I, and I probably said this before because I was absolutely enraged by it, it took us seven hours to get from where we live to Longleat you know, and we've gone seven hours here and we've done basically 400 miles north in France. Just saying, just in case you're saying, what are you doing that for? Also, for all you out there, cost of living crisis saves money. I haven't got, an, I haven't got to pay for a campsite today, last night. Whatever it bloody was. So that's it. That's what I thought. I'd just preempt any comments because I know people like to comment and say things like, "Just stay on a campsite, mate. It's much easier." How dare you? Well, uh, there's the evidence. It's not. Actually, it is. But this is the way to do it if you want to get on. This is motor home life in a caravan. Right, another air, so we've moved on a couple of more hours, maybe three hours from where I last spoke. A um, little bit more green, this one. Little specific area here for caravans. There we are. Um, again, very nice, shady, picnic benches. I think we're still running a bit early, so I think I might have, a, have an hour's kip here. I mean, in the caravan, not out here on the grass. But it's kind of tucked right away. There is a petrol station on that over there. You kind of, when you feel like you've not gone the right way, you um, you find it. It's perfect. Really quiet. Quite warm again, which is nice. Right, whilst we're waiting, wasted a bit of time here <clears throat> at this air, I just wanted to go through a few problems that we've had. Um, you know when you go on all the well, maybe you don't do this, but you think, oh, no, just you have this overall dread that something might go wrong. Well, I said in an earlier vlog, I think, about the aircon. So we, the first time we used it, we had the red light come on, which was a worry. Now, since then, it's been okay. But every time we turn it off and on, you just think it's going to fail. Uh, we had a funny issue with the fridge, but again, I don't think it's an issue. <laughs> Fly. Because... I don't think the electric, the electric supply was um, regular enough, if you like, so I kept switching on to gas. So as I mentioned, I've used like about 10 kilograms of gas over the two weeks, just kind of keeping the, the fridge running. During the day, it seems to run on gas. At night, it seems to be okay on electric. So I guess it's, you know, not enough, not, not much draw during the evening, uh, night anyway. 
Well, I'm trying to talk about electricity and I know nothing about it other than you switch it on and it works. This is quality caravan vlogging. There weren't enough of it. <laughs> um, yesterday, driving here, I noticed that <clears throat> the ATC light was flashing green. Now, um, at like three in the morning, I was on Google and a look and apparently it's not a big thing. You can move it back and forwards a bit and, but anyway, now it's red. And I think what it might be <clears throat> is that the last site we was on was really dusty, as you can see, maybe by the car. So I'm just hoping that as dust has got in there and, and what I'll do, I'll unhook it in a sec try and clean it and then in fact I might leave it to the next so we get to the next site which is not far away and oh uh, Maddie broke the bin <clears throat> the door bin I, I dread to think how much those door bins are I, I think it's just gonna be I'm gonna have to remortgage the house to buy one why is caravan stuff so expensive it's a crappy old bit of plastic and I'm just dreading how much it's gonna be you know the bin on the door anyway what a cracking little air. I was just talking to Maddie there over an egg sandwich, as you do. I don't know that there's anything in the UK like this. I might be wrong. I mean, I've, I've obviously travelled every single inch of the UK, but I just don't think we've got the space to allow, like, up there in t distance is petrol station and all the stuff that we normally have. And then attached to it is basically like a campsite. I know T-Bay maybe does something like that, but I guess they charge you to stop there. I, I don't know, don't quote me on that. No mass murderers in the bushes either. I don't know. Anyway, we'll get off to the next site in a minute.
This is quality pasty vlogging.